Hey guys, we've got uh, episode five of season four coming at you. I'm joined today by uh, Bernard, aka Tyrannus. Let's get into it. Absolutely. Cool, so, Bernard. Tell us about, uh, about cosplay and how did you get into it? When did you get into it? I got into cosplay originally about <clears throat> 30 years ago. And um, I had a thing for a young lady who was working at a service station close to where I lived and she got robbed. I went out and made myself a, a superhero costume and <laughs> sat on the hill above her workplace for about three weeks until she noticed me. As you do. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, let's just say that ended in a, a massive crash and burn and a fail and uh, destroyed my confidence kind of for being a superhero. <laughs> and then about oh, three or four years ago, um, we all piled in the car and came up to one of the big conventions, either Supernova or Comic-Con, one of the two big ones. And it was an awakening. Yeah. Here were several thousand people getting around in costumes and embracing their fandoms, regardless of what it was. And you were actually singled out as one of the odd people if you were there not in costume. Yes, was it this, this the first no, one? No, no, no. Um, this is my, my, my opus magnus at the moment, my big <laughs> one. Uh, the first one, I went as a, a seven foot tall mashup of a Cyberman from, from Doctor Who, crossed with Darth Vader. And Wicked. since then I've made um, Captain Phasma, I've made Kylo Ren, and I've made this one, which is my Nordic carved armor from Elder Scrolls from Skyrim. Awesome. So, yeah, this is my, my favorite piece so far. Yeah, it look, it's, it's, a, it's a funny work of art, to be honest with you. No, oh, shucks. <laughs> how, long, how long did this, this take? Um, okay, uh, nine months. But Jeez, you did knock up a costume, didn't you? I did, yeah. Just whip one out <laughs> over the weekend. Um, 140 hours of construction time. That's that's a lot of work. And did you uh, did, did you have a blueprint for this, or did you have to come up with the proportions yourself? The design was that sort of combination of both. Yep. Um, it's quite common through the cosplay world, particularly people who make armor, to use a thing called pepper cura, okay. which is paper craft. And there are lots of pepper cura patterns out there for both making your armor from a paper base or from a foam base. Okay. So. Um, all the patterns for this entire suit of armour, with the exception of the weapons, are all pepper cure patterns. The problem is they're very generic in their proportions. I okay. take a standard 5 foot 11 person <laughs> weighing so many kilos. So you do have to proportion it for you and you have to proportion each part, okay. but still trying to keep it look like it's all in proportion respectively. You can't have a really big helmet because you've got a big head yeah. and a very slim chest piece because <laughs> then you look like a, a, a pop final. <laughs> so yeah, you still have to keep it all orientated to fit you, but to look in proportion so it looks correct. Yeah, of course. This uh, this particular piece, did this is this the first uh, first rendition of, of this particular set of armor? Have you had did, were there a, a few a few um, I guess speed bumps. Oh, to, you're to so new to this, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. no, nobody's first costume, the best costume is the first one. No. <laughs> um, this chess piece is what I call the Mark III. I've made two other chess pieces prior to this. The first one was just a smidgen too small because like a newbie, when I measured it and scaled it to fit me, I did it with just a t-shirt on. And I didn't compensate for the fact that there'd be this bodysuit and then there'd be a cooling vest and then there would be the gabison or that padded um, set of armour underneath this and when I put the first one on with all that on there um, it just popped like a, an egg in a microwave and just <laughs> bing, seems going everywhere and the next one just looked horrendously big. So look I guess take us through a bit of a, a bit of a process from where do you start? Where do you start? Do you, well um, how do I tackle before this? Before I build a costume I actually have to like what I'm going to build. It, it has to be um, both something I'm going to connect with yep. so uh, character from a game that I play so that I actually like the character or a character from a movie that I like watching so that I've got a connection with that character and then the costume's got to be something that I don't mind stomping around and being pointed at while I'm wearing it. This is my armour in the game yeah. so I've been wearing this armour every time I look at my character for like 300 hours so I've got a connection there and I looked at all the other costumes that I made and the armour ones are all very large plain flat surfaces. Okay. So I wanted something that was going to make me step up a bit. And when I took a closer look at mine, you can see there's there's all different layers, there's detailing yeah. in it, there's texture, there's aging and weathering. It's 
far removed from just this production line straight off of the off of the shelf. Straight off the studio. So, um, yeah, the, my process is I'll, I'll normally make a helmet for a suit of armour. And if the helmet doesn't light my fire, I probably won't proceed with the rest of the build. So I built the helmet first, which we've got. He was running prepared earlier. Here's, yeah. <laughs> um, so I built the helmet first and I, I liked what I was getting with the helmet. Okay, um, yeah. The whole aged finish, the detailing on it, it just I went, yep, yeah, no worries, let's move on. That's, that's basically my process. And I guess the, the, like the gouges in there give you a lot of room for creative freedom. Like you can Absolutely. You really um, play around. I love going to the convention and seeing everybody's costumes and there, there's some fantastic effort goes in there. A lot of them look like they're brand new. Yeah. And I wanted this character to actually look like he the character it. from the game. Yeah. So um, I sat there, I drew all the, the battle damage on with chalk first. Yeah. And I had a look at where damage would come from to help it try and sell the story correctly. I did the process. I looked at what sort of damage I receive in the game. There's animals that attack you. Yeah. There's lots of swords and axes that attack you. And there's lots of arrows. So there's different types of damage on there. There's a big claw mark here from a beast. So... I mean, do you want to run us through perhaps how you went about making uh, perhaps one of the smaller items or, yeah, or yeah, just give us a bit of a okay, run through well, the materials and things? Um, let's have a look at the glove, okay? So um, the glove is basically uh, in two parts. Oh. We've got the bracer and a, a fur glove with an <laughs> actual glove and some foam on it. <laughs> uh, the Pepicura patterns give you all the hard parts for your costume and the rest you either have to find existing patterns or emulate something out of your own head or, like most cosplayers, find something already made and adapt it to your use. So that was the basis for making the, the glove, the gauntlet. Uh, in the game, I had take lots and lots of reference shots, um, zoom in on bits and pieces that I want. So I could see in the game that he has fur wrapped around his wrist and right up to the elbow. And that's the wrong hand. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, having a look at the game, right? measuring against myself and then sewing the fur to the top of the glove. Wow. Okay, so that attached that, but then you've got to attach the, the metal pieces. And not only do you have to try and emulate what you're seeing in the game or in your anime or in your movie or in your comic, you actually have to make it practical. Because yeah. a lot of what you're seeing is, is drawn with game physics or comic physics yeah. or special effects physics and doesn't actually work in reality. It doesn't relate. So to be able to grip a weapon and flex as you move, you need to have articulation at the wrist and at the, ha at the fingers. So uh, we broke the, the metal plate into two parts because you can see in the, in the reference images that there's an overlay. Okay. okay. So that's where the bracer comes in. It's, it's made out of uh, EVA foam floor mats. So those mats that you get at the hardware right. store, the big square mats with the jigsaw puzzle edges on them. Yep. Most cosplayers use that or something very similar to that to make foam armor. So That's all. they just slide straight on, slap a bit of battle damage and some paint on it, and it starts looking like right. it's actually Metal and fur and leather. Yeah, and the from one the game. Wow. So, yeah. Jeez. So to bring it up to life and make it look like it was something out of the game, it's, it's covered in nicks and cuts <laughs> yeah. and chips, and there's blood spatter on there and some dirt and aging and weathering. Shoe polish is your friend. <laughs> okay. Um, I painted the foam with a rubber solution first, and that seals the foam and gives you a good base to start with because foam's relatively porous, and yeah. when you paint it with normal paint, it looks very pockmarked and very textured and a lot of costumes don't look like that. I cut it with a rubber spray, yep, which is designed for sealing le leaks under sinks. <laughs> okay. And then just normal paint process, so primer, yep. the, pri the base colour that you want. So this was a, a really high polished silver aluminium colour. Right. So again, it looked brand new. Yeah. And that's obviously what, what I'm, not why I'm trying to sell. So I, I looked on the University of YouTube and found a young guy in Sydney who uses liquid shoe polish to age and weather his costumes and his props. So a couple of coats of black, 
sprayed with a clear sealant so the black didn't move and a coat of brown to give it that dirt and weather. Yeah. Um, and then it was aged and weathered and I thought, well, we're going to splatter some blood on this. Uh, PVA wood glue, just normal white wood glue. A couple of shots of red food colouring and a shot of green to give it that coppery tinge. Yeah. And then just splattered it all over the place. So, yeah, blood's really easy to make. <laughs> yeah. Particularly if you're cosplaying. If you haven't actually bled for real on your costume, you're probably not doing it right yet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's the, the easier process for something that covered all three sorts of things, using a found item and incorporated it in, using a soft texture, the fur, and using the, the foam to make the armour. Wow. Yeah. Here he is in all his glory. Bernard's 140 hours. <laughs> what a piece. Thank what you. a piece. <laughs> Sturdy. Oh yeah, incredible. very robust. <laughs> yeah, it's seen some hours around the place. Um, yeah, geez, got to be proud, hey? Yeah, very. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're raving. <laughs> uh, look, to news around Perth, uh, Enoch Arden is showing at His Majesty's Theatre from the on the 14th of June. It's a dramatic piece based on a poem of the same name. Uh, also at His Majesty's Theatre on the 16th and 17th of June is uh, Rumour Has It, which is the story of the rise of Adele. Uh, of course, the pop star. And SAE Quantum Perth are having an, a, a, a workshop, study for a day. Uh, that's on July the 1st. Uh, any links for information is in the description box below. Cool, so that's us for this week. Uh, thanks for coming in, Bernard. It's a look, it's a wonderful piece. Thank you. No worries at all. Thank you. Yep. You need to be at Supernova on the 24th and 25th of this month. On the note of Supernova, guys, uh, next week is going to be mayhem. We've got a whole mess of cosplayers coming in. I mean, I don't know what you want me to tell you. It's going to be anarchy. I'm looking forward to it. Bernard, thanks again. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Bye. He's going to run us through, that's what I was saying. He's going to oh, run sweet. us through. Oh, sweet, I've got a sword designed just for that <laughs> <Yeah>. purpose. <laughs> that's a chest problem. <laughs> the editor. <laughs> You're going to sound like R2-D2. Yeah. Yeah. I found if you cuss heaps, they don't normally use your outtakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That and, that that and, and full having, stops in his text. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That and having um, onion experts dropping fidget spinners, that's a sure way to avoid <laughs> outtakes. Yeah, it's amazing that it's all, yeah, speechless, <laughs> <laughs> I'm smacked.